In this video, through a simple example and rather simple arguments, we will try and explore this concept of Eurodollar futures convexity adjustment. Convexity is a term which we use for curvature and this simple example will help us get to the origin of this convexity adjustment which means that we will try and figure out why this adjustment is required and also a few rules of thumb that will help us understand how much this adjustment should be okay let's begin with this simple example i am assuming that i am a bank and at time t equal to zero i have planned to borrow this sum of one million dollars at this time point t equal to one year from today okay so one year hence i'll be borrowing one million dollars for a period of three months okay so it's a borrowing for a period that starts not as of today but starts at some point in the future so my cash flow diagram would look something like this at time t equal to capital t1 which is one year from today i will be receiving this sum of money one million dollars and at time point t equal to capital t2 which is one year three months from today i'll be paying back the original principal which is one million plus a certain amount of interest which has been calculated on the basis of the fair market interest rate let's say the interest rate prevailing in the interbank market let it be the LIBOR quoted as of this time point t equal to t1 which is one year okay so if this interest rate is r sub m it denotes the market rate then my interest should be equal to principal 1 million that times r m that times the period which is three months which is 0.25 in years okay as of time t equal to zero which is as of today i don't really know what this rm will be this rm is a fair market rate that will be fixed only when i arrive at this time point t equal to t1 okay so that means i have an exposure to this random variable rm and this exposure please note is a short exposure why is it a short exposure because if this market variable this rm goes up my interest cost goes up i stand to lose if rm goes up and therefore it's a short exposure okay so what can i do as of today to hedge my risk which i have to this random variable rm there are two options in front of me either i can go to the otc market and trade in forward rate agreements or i can go to the exchange and trade in euro dollar futures let's explore the fra route first the forward rate agreement so since my original exposure to rm it's a short exposure i would need a hedge that gives me an offsetting gain if rm goes up okay so for that purpose let me design or let's say customize for myself a forward rate agreement in which the notional let it be 1 million the amount which i'm planning to borrow let's say this fra is a t1 cross t2 fra in which t1 is one year and t2 is one year three months based on the term structure of interest rates that is prevailing as of today let it be the case that the fixed rate the fair forward rate which i am quoted as of today let it be two percent and because i need a position which can give me an offsetting gain when rm goes up let me enter into a long position in this fra when i say a long position essentially it's a position wherein i'll be receiving rm and i'll be paying out this fixed rate rk so net net my payoff from this fra would look something like this 
the notional amount 1 million dollars that times rm minus 0 0.02 remember receiving rm paying fixed so rm minus 0 0.02 that times the period involved which is 0.25 years now please note that as per the market convention when it comes to fra you will be receiving the discounted value of this payoff at time t1 itself because at t1 when rm is known to you you exactly know what your payoff is and instead of waiting till t2 your counterparty will give you this payoff at t1 itself the discounted value of this payoff discounted at rm let's ignore that market convention for this particular analysis let's assume that you get the payoff at t2 itself when i take this payoff which comes from the FRA and combine it with my original cash flow diagram net net the cash flow diagram from the two positions combined looks something like this I'll be receiving 1 million dollars at T1 which is one year from today and I'll be paying out this which is principal plus the interest which has been offset by the payoff which comes from the FRA okay so these two arrows since they point in different directions i'll be netting these two cash flows so take a look at these guys this exactly will cancel with this guy and net net what i'll be paying out will be equal to 1 million my principal plus 1 million times 0 0.02 times 0 0.25 okay so this is my interest amount and this works out to five thousand dollars see i do have a hedge in place because after i have put up this fra based hedge i am no longer exposed to this random variable rm my interest rate which i have to pay for this borrowing which is for a future borrowing period has been locked in at this rate of two percent and therefore the interest cost has been locked in at five thousand dollars okay so this is how a hedging can be done using fra now let's move on to hedging using euro dollar futures now let me go to the futures market as of today at time t equal to zero let it be the case that the futures market is also working with the same fair rate of two percent for this period of time between one year from today and one year three months from today if the futures market is also working with an interest rate of 2%, it means that as of today, the one-year futures will be quoting this level of 98. Why? Because the quoting convention works something like this. It is 100 minus the implied futures rate in points okay not in decimal in points okay so if the futures market is also working with the two percent interest rate then it will be 100 minus 2 and hence it will be quoting a q naught of 98 okay so this 98 does imply an implied rate of two percent now please note that although when it came to fra we entered into a long position for our hedge when it comes to euro dollar futures we will be entering into a short position in these futures the reason being that when we take a look at how these futures are quoted we have in this quote flipped the sign of r okay it's 100 minus r originally we have a short exposure on rm and therefore to enter into a hedge which gives us an offsetting gain when rm moves up we have to enter into a short position in euro dollar futures at this moment let's just take it as given as we keep moving forward why this is a short position will become clearer okay so it's a short position that we'll be looking at and the number of contracts that we'll be working with let it be one contract why is that so because the denomination underlying a euro dollar futures contract is fixed to a standard amount of one million dollars and that is exactly what our borrowing amount also is okay so let's go for one contract of euro dollar futures with one year delivery or one year expiry 
okay so please note that when we compare euro dollar futures with fras very quickly note that while fras don't have daily marginning because fras are otc instruments euro dollar futures do indeed have daily margining that's the first difference to note secondly in fra our payoff came at t2 while in euro dollar futures our final settlement will happen not at t2 rather it will happen at t1 okay now please note that the gain slash loss in these futures contract can be very simply calculated using our rule of thumb and the rule of thumb is that euro dollar futures they give you a gain slash loss of 25 dollars for every 0 0.01 move in the quoted level of these futures so 25 for every 0 0.01 change or 0 0.01 move which means 25 times 100 for every unit move in the quoted futures level okay so my gain slash loss would be for this short position will very simply be equal to number of contracts that times initial quoted level which is 98 minus the final quoted level i don't know this level as of today let me just denote it as q at t1 that times 2500 okay this is my gain slash loss from euro dollar futures so nf is 1 98 as it is let qt1 let me write this quote at t1 in terms of rm it will very simply be equal to 100 minus rm but since this guy is in percentage points and i want rm to be in its actual decimal form let it let us write it as 100 minus 100 times rm that times 2500 open all these brackets and very quickly convince yourself that the gain slash loss at t1 which would have accumulated in your account if i am ignoring time value of money and financing costs etc would amount to this much okay now comes an interesting aspect and that is please note that these futures they are giving you their final gain slash loss slightly earlier at this time point t1 the fra gave its final payoff at t2 so therefore it tells me that i can make this early receipt of this gain slash loss work to my advantage i can take this gain slash loss and i can invest it into let's say an interest bearing account at time t1 and earn interest for this period between t1 and t2 because futures are giving me this potential to earn this additional gain which is in the form of interest i don't really need to go for one full contract of these euro dollar futures so what i can do is something which is referred to as tailing the hedge instead of working with one full contract i can work with slightly lesser that means a number of contracts which is computed as the present value of this one using a fair interest rate which is let's say two percent and assuming a period of three months see this is like a discount factor worked out for a period of three months using an interest rate of 0 0.02 so one times this discount factor gives me my new number of contracts okay so let me tail my hedge that means work with these many contracts and let me promise myself that when i receive my final gain slash loss at t1 i'll be investing this gain slash loss at the fair interest rate at t1 which is i know rm and at t2 i'll be receiving this as my total gain slash loss what is this number it's this expression which we arrived as as, as the gain slash loss for one contract at t1 scale this number by our new number of contracts 
which is nf star 1 over 1 plus 0 0.02 times 0 0.25 and then further scale this amount by the capitalization factor between t1 and t2 computed using rm okay this much amount invested at t1 would grow to this times 1 plus rm times 0 0.25 when you land at t2 okay so what is it telling me it's telling me that if i work with a futures based hedge the final total interest payment that i should be looking at should be equal to this guy my original interest payment which is 1 million times rm times 0 0.25 with a minus sign because it's a payment offset it by the gain slash loss which comes from my futures based hedge exactly this expression okay so this puts us in a very good situation to compare the outcomes from the futures based hedge and the forward based hedge what does it tell us it tells us that in the case of a forward based hedge our final total interest payment was a very nice flat number which was minus five thousand dollars we had no dependence to rm in the case of the futures based hedge we still have dependence on rm see there's an rm sitting here and there is rm sitting in the expression for the gain slash loss at t2 also so you might ask this question is the futures based hedge not a hedge because we are still still seeing dependence on rm well to understand if it's a hedge or not let's do this let's plot our final interest payment versus rm for the two hedges that we have done the forward based hedge and the futures based hedge the forward based hedge see it's flat at minus 5000 our futures based hedge has a dependence on rm and because we have an rm here which is being multiplied by another rm and hence we get rm squared this dependence on rm is not a linear dependence okay there is a quadratic term coming in okay so when i make a plot like this it's telling me that the final interest payment when i work with a futures based hedge shows me some kind of a curvature some kind of a convexity is it a good hedge well reasonably good why because if i were to vary rm all the way from two percent to one percent see my final interest payment has changed from five thousand to four nine nine four a change of only six dollars okay so i do have dependence on rm but it's not a very strong dependence i am reasonably hedged okay now if i were to take a look at this plot it's telling me something else also and that is if i were to go with a futures based hedge that means this orange plot i am systematically gaining compared to if i were to go with a forward based hedge why am i systematically gaining because irrespective of where rm finally lands up at my interest payment in a futures based hedge is actually less than or equal to the payment in my forward based hedge see i am always better off if i work with a futures based hedge okay and this is not market wise i mean a good situation to be in if this is the reality nobody will go for a forward based hedge everybody would go for a futures based hedge okay and you are inviting arbitrage between these two markets so what should you do you should in some sense try and reduce this systematic gain which the futures based hedger is enjoying to do that go back to this expression and in this expression please note that to begin with it means that we were not correct to work with this number of two percent we just assumed that the forward market and the futures market are working with the same expected fair interest rate for a future period and that is two percent okay so ideally to reduce this gain 
I should work with an interest rate which is higher than 2% when it comes to the futures market. If I were to reuse a number which is higher than 2%, I will be able to bring down this gain because 2% is being used here and it's also used in this term also with a negative sign in front of it. Okay, so let me do this. Let me work with a number which is slightly higher than 2%. This will bring down this plot from the orange plot to this gray plot. And if I were to compare the gray plot with the blue line, things seem more believable, more fair now. Right? Why is that so? Because for Rm, which is in between, let's say, these two values, these two values, it seems that the forward based hedger is better off compared to the futures based hedger. For Rm, which is in this region, it seems that the futures based hedger is better off compared to the forward based hedger. Okay, so this seems to even things out. Nobody is gaining in a systematic way. Okay, so therefore it brings us to this rule of thumb that to make things even, the futures market has to work with an implied rate which is slightly higher compared to the forward market. Okay, so that's what I have written here. See, the futures implied rate should be greater than the forward implied rate. To make this inequality an equality that links these two interest rates, let me write it as forward rate is equal to futures rate brought down by a convexity adjustment. Okay, so forward rate is futures rate minus convexity adjustment. In writing down this equation, I am assuming that I have captured already the minus sign here. So this convexity adjustment is actually a positive number. Okay, then go back to this plot. The vertical distance between the orange plot and the blue line, which we have been interpreting as the gain which the hedger using the futures contract is making relative to the hedger using the forward contract, this vertical distance, please note, can also be interpreted as the payoff of a hypothetical derivatives contract which has its underlying to be Rm. Okay, so all I am saying is if I were to let's say think of a hypothetical derivatives contract which has its underlying to be Rm, the vertical distance between the orange plot and the blue line can be thought of as the payoff of this hypothetical derivative. Please note that the payoff function of this hypothetical derivative is a convex payoff function. As it is true for every derivatives contract whose payoff function is a convex function, the expected value of such a derivative contract as of today should depend on the volatility of the underlying. In this case, the volatility of the Rm. Okay, so it's telling me that this systematic gain which we have been talking about and just now a gain which we modeled to be let's say the payoff of a hypothetical derivative the expected value of this systematic gain depends on the volatility of rm okay now let us assume that we start with a certain forward rate we bump it up by a certain convexity adjustment to arrive at the futures implied interest rate. Remember we have said that forward rate is futures rate minus convexity adjustment or alternatively futures rate is forward rate plus convexity adjustment. Okay, So if I were to start with a forward rate of 2% and bump it up by a certain convexity adjustment, I will arrive at my futures implied interest rate. How much should this convexity adjustment be? Well, I know this that I want to bump my rate upwards because bumping it up makes this plot shift downwards. I will be moving from this orange plot to the grey plot. I want to bump my forward rate up by enough so that I am able to shift this orange plot down by an amount such that 
the expected value of the gain to the party using the futures contract becomes equal to zero. Okay, I don't want the party using the futures contract to have any relative advantage compared to the party using the forward contract. Okay, we have already reasoned this out that the expected gain, the way it stands at the moment as per this orange plot, depends on the volatility of this Rm. Therefore, the convexity adjustment required to make this expected gain go down to zero should also depend on the volatility of this Rm. Okay, so that is my last rule of thumb and that is convexity adjustment should depend on the volatility or let's say the variability of Rm. Okay, so this video was about understanding the origins of convexity adjustment and also a few rules of thumb that you have to keep in mind about this adjustment.